Hello and welcome to game 191 of Chesscom's Winter Classic Final. Stockfish is playing white, Lila is black, and they played an Antinimzo Indian opening with knight f3. White tries to avoid the Nimzo with knight c3, bishop b4, where black has the possibility to create a structural weakness in white's position by taking on c3 and doubling white's pawns. So white tries to avoid that with knight f3. And now black wants to play bishop e7, but just before that he makes a last attempt to double the pawns with bishop b4. If white now plays knight c3, then uh, we're back into the three knights variation of the Nimzo, and black again can take on c3 and double the pawns. But white doesn't have to do that. White can play bishop d2. And taking on d2 is a possibility, but black usually retreats the bishop to e7. The truth is that taking the bad bishop on d2, which is usually blocked in by his own pawns, is uh, not very appealing, especially now that it's been misplaced to d2 and blocks the queen's view. And also, black's bishop on b4 is his good bishop, which complements nicely the pawn structure placed on the like squares. White's dark squared bishop would like to be outside of the pawn chain on f4 or g5, so white will have to invest a move into that. After bishop e7, the game continued with g3, d5, bishop g2, castles, castles, and interestingly, this position is similar to the Catalan opening we saw in the previous video, the exception being that this bishop is now on d2 instead of c1. Lila now continued with knight d7. The pawn on c7 is usually required either to defend d5 from c6, as in this game, or to attack d4 from c5, as in the Grunfeld defense. So black tries to avoid blocking that pawn with the knight. Queen b3 defends c4, but also puts pressure on d5 and b7. a5, a space gaining move, but also maybe prevents bishop b4 and the exchange of the dark squared bishops. I'm not sure why it would play bishop b4, but black would definitely like to hang on to the dark squared bishop, especially after something like c6, when this bishop would have an influence over the weakened dark squares. Rook d1, adding an extra defender to the important d4 pawn. And if black will ever play e5 or c5, then uh, the rook will be nicely positioned to attack d5. c6 and bishop f4. And the bishop is finally on a better spot, but not for long, because after h6 and a3, the knight starts harassing it from h5. And after a little back and forth, since Stockfish doesn't want to draw the game yet, he moved the bishop back to c1, where it doesn't annoy this rook. Knight back to f6, h3, and now b5. Lila attacks c4 and she wants to clarify the queenside pawn structure before deciding where the pieces should go. Taking now twice on b5 is not very good because after bishop a6, black wins back its pawn and with a huge bonus. First of all, this bishop comes alive and he's very happy to see more of this world than the backside of some pawns or like squares. And black also wins the pawn on e2, which being central is more important than black's b5 pawn. So, not having many choices <clears throat> in this position, Stockfish played c5. And now the queen side is kind of closed, or more precisely, if Lila wants it, she can keep it closed, because if Stockfish ever tries to open it up with a4, she can keep it closed with b4, or if the fish plays b4, she can keep it closed with a4. So, having the queen side sorted out, Lila now moves her pieces closer to the white king. The game continued with knight e4, queen c2, and f5. That knight is very solid now, concrete solid. Grandmaster Yasser Seirawan once said that 
The more a knight is defended, the stronger it becomes. Knight c3, bishop f6, e3, h5, trying to open a file with h4. Knight e2, h4, pawn takes, and now bishop takes. Lila is not afraid to give up her dark squared bishop. Maybe she evaluates that after the exchange of these pieces, with White's dark squared bishop being blocked in by his own pawns, the only piece that could maybe take advantage of the weakened dark squares in Black's camp is this knight on e2, but uh, Lila can defend both dark squares accessible to that knight, so maybe giving up the dark squared bishop is not a big problem. But instead of taking the bishop on h4, Stockfish defended f2 with rook f1. And after rook f7, b3, bishop f6, bishop b2, Lila played g6, allowing this rook to reach the open h5. This bishop, though, on c8 doesn't look very happy. Being blocked in behind his own pawns, he can only hope for a better future. Knight back, rook a7, and knight d3. Those knights are dreaming about f4. Rook a7, and finally f3. Stockfish drives the knight away from e4, but after knight g5, he decides to run with the king to the queen side. But uh, this also gives up the pawn on h3. Not sure what was wrong with something like knight f4 defending the pawn on h3, but also attacking g6 and e6. Maybe something like queen e8 and running into e5. So anyway, after knight g5, Stockfish played king f2, Lila took on h3 with check, king e1, knight back to g5, king d2, and the rook goes into h2. The rook defends the bishop, and now Lila played a very interesting move, a4. She attacks on the whole board. Now that the white king is closer to the queen side, she tries to open the position there too, and taking now on a4 would be bad, because after rook a4, the rook would get into c4 and white would be attacked from all sides. So Stockfish, after a4, closed the queen side completely with b4. And since there's nothing much to do there, Lila starts moving her pieces to the king side. Knight f8, rook g1, rook g7, king c1, knight f7, king g1, g5, knight e5. Lila attacks the knight once more, so knight back, knight g6, and now f4. Stockfish is uh, trying to exchange these pawns and win f4 for one of those knights. But Lila, of course, says no. She plays g4, creating a protected passed pawn. And boy, having one of these is really good. You know, it's more relaxing than a sedative. Once you have one of these, you feel like nothing bad can happen. Knight c1, bishop d7, bishop c3. Both of them are trying to improve their bad bishops. Bishop e8, knight e5. Lila doesn't want to take here and give uh, d4 for the other knight. So she defends the knight on g6 with the rook. King b2, knight h2, allowing the queen to get to the king side. Bishop f1, rook h7, rook g2, knight h4, rook f2. Stockfish has uh, no counterplay and he can only wait for Lila to improve her position. King f8, bishop e2, queen g7, knight d3, knight g6, queen d1, knight e7. And rook f1, trying to guard h2 with the bishop. But after rook h2, bishop e1, Lila prevented that with bishop h4. And after they exchanged the bishops, queen e1 and queen h7. King a1, knight g6, knight f2, guards h3 and h1. And now... Lila just takes out the knight on e5, which was attacking c6, and she proceeds with improving the bishop and the knight. 
After a longer sequence of moves, she gets the knight to g5 and the bishop to f7, guarding e6. And we get to this position where Stockfish now tries to exchange the rooks, but eventually they will exchange the queens, and they remain with a pair of rooks. Now, the difference is that Stockfish's rook can do much, while Lila's rook can get into the 7th or the 8th ranks and can try to attack the pawns from behind. King b2, king g7, king c3, rook h2, rook g2 trying to guard the 7th rank, but rook h1, bishop c2, king f8 getting away from the spin, bishop d3, and now knight h3 with the idea of taking out this knight and then attacking the f4 and the a3 pawns with the rook. Stockfish avoids that with knight e2, bishop g6, king c2, king g7, knight g3, and now Lila decides to give up the exchange for a protected passed pawn with rook a1, knight e2, rook a3, and now knight c1, and the rook is trapped, but after king h6, king b2, rook takes and knight takes, the black king also joins the fight, and the king, knight, and rook can't really cope with bishop, knight, king, and two protected passed pawns. Knight e1, f4, trying to get in with the king, but this also opens up the bishop, which actually lived to see that better future. Knight f3, king h5, knight h2, bishop f5, pawn takes, knight takes, rook g3, delaying the advancement of the g pawn, but this drops d4 after knight e2. Rook e3, the knight takes, and knight f1, king g5, rook c3. Notice how the white king can't help because it has to watch the a pawn. King f4, knight g3. King e5, and the black pawns start rolling, and about a hundred moves later, Lila finally won. A very nice win with black, in which she first stopped play on the queen side, then stabilized the center, and eventually took over the king side, and she did all this in such a manner that Stockfish didn't have any counterplay. Please subscribe, like, and share. And also watch the other Leela games, which are all masterpieces. Thanks for watching, and see you soon.